Okay. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey, out of the notice of this meeting, okay. the Atlantic County Board of Chosen Free Holders was provided in the following manner. It was published in the Press of Atlantic City, the current Daily Journal, Hammond and Gazette News, and the red postings on the bulletin boards in county office buildings in Atlantic City here at Stillwater in the clerk's office. Will all please rise for an opening prayer. Almighty God, we ask thee to grant us the wisdom to walk in thy light and the courage to accept the responsibilities placed upon us. Guide us by thy truth, uphold us by thy power, and grant that thy presence may ever be with us. Amen. Amen. Face the flag, please. Attention, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chairman, uh, Freeholder Corsi is absent today, and Freeholder Gatto is out of the country. Thank you. Bennett? Here. Bertino? Here. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Kern? Here. Risley? Here. And from Egypt? Here. Freeholders, we all had a chance to read a copy of our minutes from 925. If you had a chance to read them, we're present. Wish to make any comments, corrections, or additions, please do so now. Otherwise, I'll take a motion to adopt. Second. All the roll, please. Ben. Ben. <laughs> She's here. I'm here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bertino. Yes. Dave. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Kern. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Fermita. Yes. Okay, our first order of business today is a presentation. Atlantic County Institute of Technology Expansion and Renovation Project by Dr. Philip J. Gunther, Superintendent. Dr. Gunther, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'd like to um, take a moment to introduce uh, some of the uh, others who are with me today representing ACIT. We have our business administrator, Mrs. Lisa Mooney, um, our architectural team of uh, Larry Marigi, Tommy Sykes, and Mark Petrella. Uh, they're working together and have been working with us for about a year um, on uh, looking at our, what our long-range facility <coughs> needs are. Uh, we're here today to uh, talk about what our long-range facility needs will be at uh, ACIT and also to talk to you about the uh, Securing Our Children's Future Bond Act, which is on the referendum, as you know, next week. Um, we have uh, been engaged in the planning process uh, for quite a while, as I've already said, and we've had conversations, of course, uh, with our advisory board, uh, which is made up of almost 300 uh, businesses and professionals um, and tradespeople from uh, throughout Atlantic County. Had uh, many conversations with our chairman and our county executive and other members of the freeholder board about what the economic development needs of Atlanta uh, County are all about. Uh, ACIT has been a member of the aviation uh, group since its founding, and uh, we have been involved in meetings uh, with the Economic Development Committee from uh, the county, as well as uh, the other educational institutions in the county to make sure that we're all aligned in supporting uh, the same uh, vision for economic development in Atlanta County. Uh, our chairman, um, Mr. Formica has had numerous conversations about workforce with me and uh, for the uh, alignment of what the needs of the county will be uh, with the training uh, needs for young people and adults in, in the um, future of Atlanta County. So I want to begin by, um, by showing uh, a little bit about who we are, what we are, and then talk a little bit about our needs. Uh, but before I do that, um, I gave a sheet on securing our uh, Children's Future Bond Act, which is on the uh, ballot. This um, initiative, uh, as you know, provides for $500 million in uh, state funds. Uh, $350 million would be for K-12 through security projects and the expansion of career and technical schools, uh, the shops, the labs, the classrooms at the county vocational technical schools. There are 21 schools throughout the state like ACIT. Uh, they are specialized schools that provide a career-focused education for the students in uh, their respective counties. Fifty million uh, would be for career and technical education projects at the county colleges. 
and then another hundred million for water infrastructure projects at schools throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, this bond act actually started a little larger. Um, it was a, about a billion dollars when it when it started, and uh, Governor Murphy um, did reduce the amount uh, to five hundred million that would be shared between uh, the entities that I just discussed. The good thing about this uh, funding if we are successful in securing the funding is it is a 75% grant, 25% local match. Uh, typically, uh, County Atlantic and Bonnie Lindau is here, our county treasurer, she sits on our board as well at the tech school. Um, typically, we get 40% debt service aid. So the county funds, uh, actually bonds for the entire amount. 60% of the funding comes from Atlantic County and 40% from the state. This uh, is a grant for 75% of the funding. So we've been involved in long-range planning for a number of years because of our growth. And we've experienced tremendous growth um, in the last 10 years in particular, um, where we are about 150% in terms of enrollment growth over that time frame. The good news is the state funding actually started to catch up. Uh, as you know, it was frozen in 2008. Uh, last year, our state funding increased um, significantly, and we were able to give uh, most of that money back to the sending districts in the form of tuition relief. But I want to talk a little bit about ACIT, and I'll move over here so I'm not standing in front of anybody. So, uh, and so most of you, if not all of you, have been to our school. Um, Freeholder uh, Fitzpatrick and uh, Kern were, were there recently in Gatto for a, a press conference with Atlantic Electric, uh, which is one of our our um, partners as well. So this is a uh, shot of the front of our building uh, as it exists right now. Uh, this is the new entranceway. The expansion project that we did in 2012 included connecting three separate buildings uh, that were built in 1974 and updated in 93, and then we did an addition in uh, 2012 to connect those buildings to accommodate a full-time comprehensive career and technical high school. So um, basically, these are our current programs. We have uh, Air Force Junior ROTC. Uh, we have an aviation studies program uh, with Atlantic Cape Community College, where the students spend part of the day at Atlantic Cape and part of the day at ACIT. Uh, our goal is to provide an opportunity for those students to get a, an associate's degree in aviation studies and their high school diploma upon graduation. We have an automotive technology program uh, the students get their ASE certifications, and if you go to an auto repair facility, you'll see those ASE uh, certifications on the wall. It's a very important uh, process for the students to go through. Uh, building technology, we have uh, carpentry, plumbing, and electrical in those programs. Computer-aided uh, drafting and design, CAD, um, is a, a program that allows students to go um, into industry, uh, using uh, the AutoCAD and other uh, design programs or go on to, uh, to college to study architecture or um, to continue in that program for advanced drafting skills. Cosmetology is uh, one of our most popular programs. In fact, we just uh, renovated uh, that area uh, this summer and we have uh, three full cosmetology shops right now. Culinary Arts is another very um, popular program in our school and um, we have a, a great teaching kitchen and a lot of demand for students to come into that program. Dental assistant, we have a specialized dental assisting area. Um, health sciences, or I should say fashion, decoration, and design. Um, we have uh, two, two fashion areas and um, once again, students go directly into the world of work or they go on to uh, study in New York or Philadelphia for careers in fashion. Um, health sciences and medicine, is another one of our very large programs that prepares students. Uh, they, they take a sequence of courses, anatomy and physiology, medical terminology. They experience a lot of the careers in the health uh, care industry. And as you know, health care is one of those areas identified in our economic development plan. Um, hospitality, uh, travel, and tourism. Actually, we're hoping to bring this back. When there was a downturn in the casino industry, we saw very little interest in the net in that program but we're hoping that it, um, it expands in the future. Information technology is computer science, and uh, we have a very large computer science program. In fact, it, it's 
it's so large that we're going to be able to split it into two separate entities, one for coding, um, more of the hardware, uh, software track, and uh, one more uh, toward design and um, that part of the industry. So a lot of students, of course, are interested in, in computer science. Math, engineering, and science, uh, it is our STEM program. We have a rather unique program. It's a four-year program. It is taught by a civil engineer. Uh, uh, we have uh, two female teachers. One is a civil engineer, and one is a, uh, has a master's in architecture. So uh, students go through a four-year program in engineering. They're exposed to all aspects of engineering. In fact, uh, Larry's on our advisory board. Um, we have a medical assisting program. Students in that program go directly into the world of work. They, they're in your um, doctor's offices, in the hospital. Um, in fact, uh, you probably would have a hard time getting to a medical office in Atlanta County that doesn't have one of our graduates there. And uh, we have a performing arts academy. As you know, we have a very uh, nice performing arts uh, center. And um, students not only uh, are involved in dance and drama, uh, and, and vocal, but they also have the technical skills of the behind the, the uh, scenes with lighting, sound, and uh, set construction. Our present enrollment is a little over 1,600 students, um, and we have a functional capacity for uh, 1,680. So we are right at capacity right now. Um, we have an unmet demand of about 600 students. We calculate that by we get over a thousand applications a year for 450 seats in our freshman class. In fact, when I leave here tonight, I'll be going to back to ACIT. We have our second open house, and we typically get over a thousand people at the open two sessions of an open house. So we're bringing in close to 2,000 people um, on those two nights. This is our enrollment trend. Uh, you can see uh, from 2009, uh, where we had about 750 students, to uh, where we are right now, over um, 1,600. And that's full-time enrollment, because what we did was we phased out the share time, um, and we, had to, we brought all the students in on a full-time basis. Uh, these are the numbers in our enrollment by program, the programs I just mentioned, and you can see that we have some very large um, enrollment in culinary, um, health sciences, and the number of applications we get for that as well, information technology, um, and you can look at those numbers and, and see that there are strong areas that correlate to uh, what the demands are both in the county and what we're seeing nationwide. This is an enrollment uh, chart by sending district. So it gives you a glimpse of where our students are coming from. Um, one of the things that's uh, unique about ACIT is a very diverse student body. As you can see, they come from all over Atlantic County. Um, our largest sending district is Greater Ray Parker Regional, but that also makes up three high schools. So um, we have uh, a large number of students from Pleasantville, uh, and it pretty much follows the, um, the population centers of the county. And uh, this is uh, our enrollment by ethnicity. So you can see that we, we have a very diverse uh, student population. Also looking at enrollment by um, ethnicity and gender, it's a little hard to see. But um, we actually have, uh, which is kind of interesting, we have, we have a lot of females. Um, and that's good. In, in some, we're always trying to get more females in the non-traditional areas like engineering and information technology and also into the trade areas. So they, we work very hard to expose uh, females to those types of careers. So the new programs that we are looking at, if we are successful um, in uh, receiving grant funding, um, would be aviation mechanics, which would be directly aligned to what you are already doing with the aviation industry. It would also be aligned with the program that Atlantic Cape will establish. So our students, typically what happens is in the programs where we all are aligned with Atlantic Cape, and there are many, there are information technology, culinary, aviation now, uh, our students will go in with advanced standing, which will save them time 
and save their parents money as well um, as they uh, achieve those college credits in a technical area going into Atlantic Cape. Um, exercise science is another area in the health um, sciences area that we feel there is a need and, and we're, we're hearing the demand. Um, we are also looking to reestablish our auto collision technology program. Uh, we presently have a shop, but we do not have enough classroom spaces to accommodate all the students who are going to that area. Diesel technology, uh, we, we would be building a new diesel technology shop. Um, there has been a lot of demand from employers in the area. They are searching for um, employees in that area and have been very, very uh, involved in trying to uh, stand that program back up. Welding, um, we would establish a new welding shop that would support our aviation uh, industry as well as uh, teaching of welding to both high school and adult students. And then HVACR, which is um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. Uh, we, we have a plumbing program right now, but we would like to add the HVACR um, as a, a separate program. And once again, there is tremendous demand for that as well. So with that, we had the newer programs, and then of course expanding our programs and building technology. Um, we would look to increase the number of students in those areas, and we need the support areas to facilitate the larger enrollment, and that is in building technology, culinary arts, and dental, um, our health sciences and medicine. Uh, we have a lot of applications in these areas. Hospitality and travel and tourism, as I said, we would like to uh, make sure that we are serving the needs of uh, the largest industry in our county right now. Better, the culinary is part of it, but the hospitality, travel, and tourism um, we see that making um, some strides in terms of coming back now that uh, the economy has turned around. We have more people employed in that industry. Medical assistant and um, math engineering and science. Um, so we are establishing that need uh, and we have uh, a new aviation lab, um, new HVAC, our diesel, Welding labs, new exercise science classrooms, additional health science classrooms, additional culinary arts labs, and uh, academic classrooms, a new gym. Right now we only have one gym with 1,600 students, which is already a challenge, and athletic support facilities. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Larry Morigi to talk a little bit more about the need, um, and uh, Tom Sykes. Uh, who have been working with us and the staff. Uh, this is a very collaborative process to try and figure out where we're going to go. One of our challenges that they're going to show it to address is we took over the old special services building, so that's a part of the reason why we've been able to accommodate additional enrollment. Um, but that building is about 250 yards from the other building, so right now we're busing students back and forth, which is a tremendous cost and a waste of time. Um, we they're going to show how we're going to try and fix that problem. But what we've been able to do at, at our, at, um, by managing things very well, we've been able to renovate that building and, and to make it usable uh, for our needs, and we'll continue to do that down the road. So I'll turn it over to Larry and Tom. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Larry Morigi. I'm a principal of We do a lot of work, and I've been working with SOC for quite a few years. At ACIT, over the last three years, we've been finding every empty closet <laughs> or space where we can create new classrooms. So every summer now, we've done three projects in our firms that, again, to try to accommodate the program under reference. I was thinking, uh, Dr. Gunder mentioned the, 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 the major space needs. When we up, we're going to be showing you the new building, some, some conceptual sketches. Really, it's, it's dealing with those areas that there's such demand in the area, whether it's aviation, HVACR, diesel, welding, exercise science, culinary arts is expanding. And you know, we're trying to figure out ways how do we best do this? Do we do it in both buildings, the existing main building and in the new building we're proposing? Uh, but then there's the support space. You know, everyone always, you know, we always, I, I'm an educational planner where I'm dealing with, you know, functional capacities and what's capacity generating, but there's also support spaces, you know, we need parking, we need storage area for. Uh, Wagner would tell us we definitely do lots of storage there. Uh, but, you know, additional administrative spaces, 
we need to accommodate the students in cafeterias. We don't want them going to lunch seventh period. We really like to have lunch around noon time if that's at all possible. So, you know, um, Sash and, and my firm really looked into these things. And it's the slide. So, what's the project? You know, in a nutshell, it's basically it's a three-story addition. It's about 143,000 square feet right now. It's a fairly large addition. And then it's a multi-purpose building uh, that has a lot of different uses. And it's going to be connecting the, um, the, this is what we refer to as the South Annex with the main building. Um, so we're going to create this almost like a stock and you know, the buildings are kind of linked together so the students get from one to the other. Uh, but, but, but part of this is also additions and alterations of the, of the main building. And, the, and you're going to see we're going to try to keep, we're trying to keep in our plan aviation, diesel, HVACR, tied to the original building. You know, because we have wood there as opposed to, uh, and you'll see it in the plans, I guess. So we're going to have these pedestrian links uh, from the main building uh, and the south wing to the student facility. And then there's alterations and renovations of some of the academic areas. We've been working very closely with the administration on what those areas are. Uh, and then there's always the need for athletic fields and, and, and a track that we have in the plan uh, and the additional parking, as mentioned before. So, uh, so we want to expand this program. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the site and the, and the plans, and then I'll ask maybe Tom or Mark to so talk a little bit about the uh, concept plan for the exterior. So you can see here we have the main building, the existing athletic fields, and the south wing. Uh, you can't tell from this slide, but there's about a 14-foot grade change. Uh, this elevation is about 58, this is at 72. Uh, so, in terms of designing this building, we're really trying to consider how do we, how do we make this come together. So, what we're proposing is this new building right here. So, again, these are the existing trade wings here. This is a link to the new building at grade, which is the lower level, or the lower level of this building. The second level, which is the same level of the south wing, we connect with the building. So, uh, I think on the next slide, so this is kind of a view, an overview of, again, the south wing here, the trade wings over here, the new building here. You can see the athletic field with track and grandstand. Ah, here it is. So, um, again, existing main building, south wing, and our new building. And you can see the red is like a major traffic pattern through. So basically at this knuckle right here, you would be coming up and getting to its level of the south wing. So, yeah, it's three levels. The main level we almost, is almost, I would say, the level of the south wing, uh, with the lower level, which you know will have windows and, and you'll see in the plan what we're proposing there. But we can get students through this building. Uh, right now, there's a bottleneck here getting into the trade wings, so we came up with a plan to cut through here, so it makes it easier for students to get through. And and the plan. So again, this is the main level. This is the same level as the south wing. Um, you can see uh, this, the traffic pattern is this light color here. Basically it's our, our new gym and locker rooms, uh, support spaces along here, whether it's a trainer or a nurse and a uh, Then this uh, cafeteria that will serve most of the students who are in the south building and a, co a couple of culinary arts labs, surgery and a kitchen, a cafe. And then there are some classrooms here that would have a multi-purpose use like uh, let's say it's at night, and uh, you know there's a, there's something going on in the gym. We can close these walls. We have a large meeting space in the public rooms. So that's on the main level. Uh, if we go up, we see a major academic piece, which is our health and medicine science. Um, here again, there's uh, an elevator over here, and you can connect from this stair that goes back into the main building. If a student is, has a class up here. They can jump in an elevator, go up the steps, come across here, and get to this classroom. Right? So again, this is the health medicine science area right here, and obviously the two-story gym. And we have it where you can actually get out onto the bleachers from that level with the press box, again, making it accessible. And then at the lower level, uh, we have storage areas, weight rooms, athletic storage, aerobics room, and health, more kind of health sciences the second set of locker rooms in the lower level. Uh, this is an interesting slide. There is a need in the community for a, a pool. 
it's hard to get pool time. Um, my firm designed a pool with a prep. It's like it's used all the time. I know. I guess the Hess School has a pool and that's very busy at AC High School. But there's a possibility of adding an eight-lane pool here. That would be at the, the pool would be the lower level. The, uh, the viewing area would be at the main level here. Um, so that is an option that we're looking at. And um, Tom, Mark, you want to talk a little bit about the exterior? Sure. Now that I mentioned we worked together for a period of time, we're actually roommates in college. <laughs> so it's been a while. Um, I think Larry did a very good uh, job explaining um, the, 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 the real theme of the project is we're operating with the North Campus and South, and the south Campus, and we're uh, a great differentiation of the story. And it's substantial. So what we looked at is a very simple, very strong building with durable materials. The exterior is what we call a main screen. It's a, it's a way to satisfy the LEEDS criteria for energy efficiency with a simple exterior skin that has a great uh, durability quality. And other materials in the building include block, stone, and concrete with nice, clean, strong finishes. We're looking for something that actually, um, we're, not, we're not just linking, we're bridging and we're pulling north and south together and we want this building to be the identity of that. And that linear walk, walkway that comes in great on one side and enters at a different elevation on the other actually pulls us together and we use the bleachers formats and the overlooks to the fields as, as sort of the highlights of the building. This is a building that's also designed for community uses. The gym locks out at night very easily. There's a cafe adjacent to the culinary area that can lock in or lock out. And it becomes a very good community hub building as well as the um, a very necessary operating entity for, for ACIT. And you can see very simple, strong forms. And again, the whole theme of our building is north and south pulled together and using the sciences, uh, athletics, and the need for uh, a very simple communicating link with the shop areas current, the proposed, and on to the South Campus that again, we've just renovated a few years ago. Very simple, very strong, and we hope very, and we know very durable. We'd like to see this uh, support the ACI team. I think, is there any other issues we'd like to cover for? No, but unless there are any questions, um, you know, we, Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one question. I think Dr. Guff, you probably can uh, speak to it. One of the concerns I get when I talk to the different school districts, and we probably had this discussion a little bit in the past, um, on, the, on the future uses of ACIT, if it's going to still maintain a focus on specialized curriculum and vocational training as opposed to just another school where if someone in their local town doesn't like the teachers or the school administration that they look to rush to our school. Now, we're not in competition in any way with um, our original purpose I would imagine. I'll, I'll let you speak to that. That's one of the issues I've always heard and I know we've had that conversation with the superintendents and boards of education in the districts. So that's the thoughts I have is, your, is the curriculum and the model that we've started, which was to offer classrooms that's, and uh, curriculum that local schools can never handle because it's too specialized. Because uh, that was what our original vision, I believe, was. Uh, are we still maintaining that original vision? Absolutely. In fact, uh, we're expanding on that vision. So every student who, who comes to our school is involved in a career technical program for four years. And the way, the way our school works is that they have that program every day for 80 to 80, 80, could be 80 to 90 minutes a day for four years. So it's not um, a one period or two period um, over the, or three period or during the time that you're in school. This is a program that um, enables students to, to receive 40 credits in career and technical education during the time they're there. So they meet all the high school graduation requirements and they have to also meet the requirements for their career and technical area and the certification requirements for that area. So for instance in cosmetology students have to have over a thousand hours in order to have a certification. They actually have to spend 
more time in their senior year, they actually get more than four years of that program because they're spending additional time. Same thing in auto. Um, they have the same certification requirements. So our, our linkages are, are really, every student there is in a career and technical program. The, when we look at um, the programs that we're, we're, we're adding, um, diesel, aviation mechanics, um, HVACR, the health sciences piece, pieces that we're adding, we're looking to provide students with a career pathway um, that they will be using state-of-the-art equipment and in all of our areas, the equipment that we have is, is very expensive. And the reason county vocational schools were set up because it's hard to duplicate that equipment um, all over the county. Our culinary arts area, uh, all of you have been through there, you know the equipment that we have there. In fact, uh, I had one of um, the individuals from the casino industry in the other day, and they couldn't believe our, our kitchen facility. Um, compared to others, you know the ones that they see in, in industry. Same with auto. It's it's thousands and thousands of dollars in equipment every year to maintain that. All of our students are in a career and technical program. Now the other thing we were very clear to say, and we'll have an open house tonight. Students in Atlanta County have tremendous choices of where they go to high school. We have great schools in the county. We're not the right school for every student. We are a school for a student who is career focused. Has a, has a good idea of what they want to do, whether it's in our academy programs where they have a general idea, I want to go into something medical, or something very specific, like I want to be a cosmetologist because we have to get them started on that certification freshman year. So students who come to us are students who want that type of experience. It is different. We expect more from them because they have to take more classes. I think what's important is that People understand from a misconception that this just, is, just isn't a, a college prep high school. This uh, is very much a vote-tech school. Yes. And the additions that you're putting here in this plan are embellishing the vote-tech part of this school. Absolutely. And, you know, the students today in, in our school, um, they are prepared. If they choose to go to college, they have the academic courses majority of the students to go to college so they will have um, the, the they will have algebra they will have the language that they need if they want to go to college so that pathway is there for them they want to go directly into the world of work they have the skills to do that in fact we have one of our major initiatives this year we've always had a strong work program <clears throat> we're putting more students out into industry this year than, than we ever have before um, we are really focusing on getting students out there and getting that on-the-job experience in their senior year. So it, it's a very um, much a different type of program um, for students who are interested in career technical education. Some students are not. Some students want to take all the humanities classes they, they can in, in <coughs> high school. Um, they may want to just focus on the academics. Um, that they, they would still that we're probably not the right place for them because you have to take a career and technical program to be part of our school. Yeah, really, it's Patrick. Um, <coughs> the way that the um, ACIT has developed and changed over the years, I mean, clearly this is not the low tech from when I went to high school. Sports programs, cool, academics, that sort of thing, and that gives, I was very impressed, really impressed. And that gives students who want to start their career right away a jump start. They can step out when they're finished their senior year and they have a career. The other side, and we have to ask this question, is since this has been developing over a number of years and is now um, a full-blooded high school, it's not just a Votech. The other high schools are, are losing students, but they still have their big facilities. So we have to think about that. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, I think it's a wonderful thing, but it's a different thing. Yes. So how are we going to anticipate those issues going forward? They still have to pay their electric bill. You know, I don't know that it's in our purview to get into governing individual school districts in Lamb County. Uh, and I'm not here to criticize, but I have discussed this naturally as we all have with the districts. You know, the 
population of Atlantic City changed between, you know, 2001 and 2011, and the job market changed, and families had to find other places to live. But I, I do believe that, you know, they have to individually search their own districts as to what spaces they should downsize with. I know on the island, down beach for years, they would close schools down, the neighborhood would regenerate, they built schools. Margate must have closed and opened in Ventnor, you know, five different times. They expanded and contracted. So that's the only thing that I would say is that, you know, you take a look. We've been talking about diversity a lot the last few weeks. You take a look at the demographic of this high school, and you realize that over 60% are minority qualified. The opportunity that it gives to, you know, students, you know, in different, in different, in different areas of the county that wouldn't otherwise be there is tremendous. I mean, that, that's one thing we can't deny. Because if you take a look at it, uh, Dr. Gunther, what are we, about 65% minority? Yes, uh, yeah, when you, when you look at that, right. It's a tremendous example of diversity, this school. We're also about 60% free and reduced lunch. So, right. so you get all the amendments. But your question, not to divert from your question, is one that I've been dealing with for, and, and you've been dealing with this year. And it is, it sort of seems to be a burden upon the sending districts that lost 400 students, still need to keep their lights on. So it was a tremendous relief to see the tuition reduction because this high school was unfairly funded for eight years? Yes. Eight years, we were 60% under the funding formula because the state had no money. So it finally caught up. And uh, I got a question to ask. Where are you going to put the boiler? Well, we, the mechanicals are working on right now. now I should also why, why that's an inside joke is because we had to replace a boiler at the special services school that Fort Knox couldn't get out of the building. And I hate to tell you what it cost the taxpayers. So I hope you design this one with access. <laughs> yeah, we, we will. And the other, the other thing I should mention, the pool is in there as an option. Yeah, we're uh, the we, pool. We, we're we're the pool. I know you did. I, I saw some. Uh, but the, the reality is that there is a tremendous need for pool time in Atlanta County. There, there is, uh, we're confident that you would have facility use of that where people would have to, you know, with swim teams and things of that nature, would have to pay. Whether that would completely offset the cost, um, probably not, but we would have you know, the facility to use. But that's something that was put in as an option. The other thing, the other statistic that we're very proud of is um, every our graduation rate hovers between 98 and 100 percent. So you know, we, we really connect kids with things they want to do. And the issue, the other, the other, um, we we understand the other school districts and, and whether they have uh, level enrollment um, or uh, they have declining enrollment. For us, and, and I know for, for the other educators in Atlanta County, really looking to do what's best for the student. So we know we get a thousand applications a year, and we'll be able to accommodate 450 students. We will not be able to accommodate all 1,000 who apply. We, we just can't build a facility that big, and we couldn't come to you and ask. But we do try and accommodate the students. That's why we've done everything to use all the space that we have. Um, and you know the, we have uh, the faculty that we have that's different than a regular school district doing many of their programs is that all of our faculty have worked in that industry if they're teaching career technical. Um, you saw our, our, our electrical teacher who is a uh, uh, female electrical electrician who was a member of the electrical union, works in the electrical union in the summer, teaches during the winter. We have everybody there is certified in the career and technical area. They've actually worked in that area to receive that certification. I just have a comment because just the, you know listening to you and the types of jobs that you are adding, they can come out and go right into our very good paying jobs, and they are jobs that are needed throughout our community. So and that is something that we really need instead of you know some of the um, uh, the economic development that we've been talking about. That's a real key. For and the focus too is to have students who, if they don't go directly in the world of work, our goal is that they stay within that focus that they started in high school and that they come back to Atlantic County and 
contribute to our economy. So we, we have students who have actually been in our IT program or our engineering program, have done an internship at the FAA Tech Center, on the way to college and now work at the FAA Tech Center. So for us, that, that is a um, really a success that a student has been through a system, understands what they want to do, is prepared to go to college, goes, and then comes back and works in our county in an industry that is very important to uh, our economic development. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to point out, which you have up here in the enrollment, the communities are obviously taking advantage of it, and it gives them, the students, the option to do it more in a vocational school, Atlantic City, Pleasantville, Greater Egg Harbor Township, they can, in Egg Harbor Township, but the vast majority of students that are utilizing the facilities are taking advantage of the opportunities that the vocational training will offer. And yeah, it kind of follows the, um, the patterns of the size of the schools. Know, they're, you can see that, um, and some schools have some. They have some career technical <coughs> programs that they are operating as well. Um, in some of the areas that are not as equipment uh, focused, so there's a, a program for engineering called Project Lead the Way that a lot of schools will develop. Um, doesn't have to be taught by an engineer; it can be taught by a math teacher. Or we feel as career technical school, we, we need to have an engineer teaching. Um, they're very good programs, and they're just a, a different way to deliver the content than, than what we do. We I cut them off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, as an educator, you can get all the time to it. I didn't realize that not every student wants to go to college or should go to college. I'm already seeing um, some of the magnet schools that the Greater Ray Carp Regional School offers that come to me for recommendations. And I've had, you know, likewise, a lot of ACIT respective students come to me for recommendations as well. Um, so one of the concerns obviously the Greater Acre Regional had was large numbers of the losing out on the students. Um, to kind of offset that, I know you, you mentioned that there's 60% free this lunch. Is ACIT eligible for Title I funding? Yes. Of that? We're a Title I school. And I know with that with that money, federal money that a lot of strings attached, can that be used to help expand these vocational programs? The, the Title I money? Well, it's used in very specific ways I know for academics. Um, remediation and academic uh, opportunities for students, but we, um, the one area that we do receive funding from, Lisa Mooney is our business administrator, she'll, she'll chime in as well, is that uh, Perkins, which is the federal funding, um, which allows us, and, and, and comprehensive schools as well, to uh, start new programs, to buy equipment, um, which is, you know, a very, very vital source for us for both the high school program and the post-secondary programs. We receive funding in both of those areas. So, so most of our Perkins money is spent on equipment purchases. So, um, with most of our Title I money going towards instruction and um, you know, supplemental instructions as tutoring and, and more of the instructional areas, not so much with equipment. I mean, just the reason I was asking, I think it's great that you're expanding the technical and vocational programs. Just as the large number of students come in, there's potential to receive a greater Title I funding set some of the other concerns the districts may have. Right, and, you know, we can't supplant, but we can we can add to our programs right. um, with that funding. So. And as uh, the chairman said, getting the, um, the funding this year to get us back, and we're not there yet. Uh, we should, they, they are phasing this in, so we'll be getting more funding, state funding, as it gets phased in. Um, we've been able to reduce our tuition Cost to the sending districts, and you know we'll have some increases in areas, but um, with the additional funding, our tuition is calculated after all state and county aid is, is taken off the top. So the tuition then um, will continue, hopefully, uh, to go down with with the additional funding. Thank you. We have three other questions. Yes. So. Patrick. Um, on the question on the ballot, are we, as a board, willing, able to say that we can do that? Well, certainly, it is something that, it, there's two sides of the bond issue here. There's the encumbrance. Uh, the bond issue is critical to a lot of education. But on the other side of that is the fact that we are encumbering half a billion dollars uh, to allow the state to create a state real estate tax. Uh, 
historically, the sales tax was going to be around for one year. Seven years ago. Historically, the gas tax, we didn't know, had an escalator in it, and we don't want it forever. So, I mean, I think it's an individual choice uh, as to how you can talk about it. But, uh, you know, you definitely have to consider that going to the ballot box. You know, that's my opinion. Anybody else can chime in? I think I would add to the chairman. We've, we've never done it in the past. We've never uh, taken a position on We've never taken a position on anything on the ballot. That's what we should do. Yeah. But certainly, uh, and, you, and um, this is a conceptual you know, meeting at this point. You're going to have figures for us down the road, Absolutely. timelines, and so on. So this is an evolving discussion. So it's great. Thank you. Well, we want one to keep you informed. Yeah, this is the work that we've been doing with our, our volunteer board members. And um, it's tremendous. Show you where we are. If grant money is available, we'll, we'll have a project. Um, we'll be back at that uh, time. It, it certainly, uh, it certainly makes I think all of us feel good to see this plan going toward the Go Tech. And I mean, that's something that we hear from all constituents. That, and I think it may be wise to canvas our work, canvas our workforce needs. I had, as everybody may have heard, you know, there's a uh, Call it something different. What do you call auto body here? It's called auto collision auto technology. technology. I, love, I love those words. I couldn't sell it better. But in auto collision technology, instead of fender benders, uh, there is such a need for that. I mean, I had the this uh, this new uh, franchise opened up a hundred in the Northeast. I'm not going to be. It's not Precision. What's the name of it? They're over there on Pleasant. Caliber. But it's Caliber. Caliber. They cannot find anybody to man their shops. So I think canvassing the workforce needs on an annual or semi-annual basis should maybe uh, be helpful in designing your curriculums. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, you're free to go. Or no, thanks. Or, or <laughs> the rest of the meeting. No, actually, we have an open house after you're back. All right. <laughs> By the way, the culinary part of, of, the, of your school is equipment-wise. I know a little bit about the kitchen equipment, and uh, later on, we'll talk about kitchen equipment. It's as good as any casino. It's pretty trendy. I know I don't have to offer good always because you guys made taste for tonight's open house. So. Thank, thank, thank you for your attention. Out. Appreciate it. Section 74 of Chapter 4 of the Atlantic County Code entitled Wards Not Allocated Within Departments. First reading. Second. Moved and seconded. A uh, ordinance's first reading will welcome public input in its second reading. Uh, Jerry, as I was explaining, this particular ordinance only has to do with, uh, you know, separating the funding for the, uh, this is the Board of Elections, is that correct? It's the, separate, it's the official separation of the superintendent of elections from the board of elections. Strictly housekeeping for funding purposes That's under correct. the state That's statute. Correct. Is that That's all correct. this is? Any free, other free order questions? Okay, we'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risling? Yes. And for me. Yes, go on the Resolutions now, 527. Amendment to an intergovernmental service agreement with the city of Absecon for the design and construction of drainage improvements to New Jersey Avenue, Highland Boulevard, Mill Road, 
an ambassador drive to extend the term date additional county share $286,830. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public interest in this resolution? Free order questions? Call the roll, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me? Yes. 528. Competitive contract with Caring Inc. for nutrition site management at the Jeffries Towers Senior Center amount not to exceed $62,500. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public interest here? Free order comments? Sure. Real, yes. Please state your name, sir. Uh, Pre code 169 Cumberland Avenue. Yes. Um, actually, Mr. Chairman, my question goes to both uh, 528 and 529. Um, I wasn't sure if, it, if the original uh, bidding was done site by site, and it just so happened that one place was a better deal for the other sites, but then uh, the people in 528 were a better deal for Jeffrey's Towers, or was that split up? you got to ask a specific question for 528, please. Um, specific, I'm asking for 528 is why is uh, that one site versus the other sites? It, the, uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah, Car Caring Incorporated is located in Jeffrey's Towers, where this building is. And, and the, the programs have worked together for a number of years. So I, I think the Jewish Community Center just decided it was better just to leave it the way it is, and they didn't bid on it. Well, any other further questions? Okay. Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me? Yes, 529. Competitive contract with Milton and Betty Katz Jewish Community Center to provide nutrition site management at various locations throughout Atlantic County, amount not to exceed $347,680. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest here. Three other questions. Three other days. Um, I have a couple of questions, actually, Jerry. So, uh, I spoke with, well, it's unscientific, but a couple um, seniors who attend the Galloway Township site, um, and the township manager as well, and there were some concerns as far as the kitchen cleanup. Is that part of the contract? Is the GCC required to clean up the kitchen after you know, meals are served? Or? They're supposed to clean the equipment and everything, correct. I mean, in other words, the equipment comes in from the county. We, we as you know, we have uh, shaving dishes there. We set it up. We're supposed to clean up after we leave, and then somebody comes and picks up the equipment back in the kitchen. That's correct. Right. Because, you know, it was expressed that sometimes that isn't happening and some of the, the volunteers are... are you getting know, up after, and leaving? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, and, and they just apparently repainted the kitchen because it was, had been, I guess, left pretty messy. And, okay. Um, that could be just um, a couple other things. Is, um, is, is JCC requiring, is it, I guess it's a dollar donation to receive a meal at this site? Because I've been told that some people are, have been kind of pressured and they're no longer going who otherwise would probably need to be there to receive some meals. We're not, you know, we're not allowed to charge right, them the old American right. Jack. It's a donation. That's correct. Right. They're not supposed to put the. Okay, so supposed that's, to force anybody to pay. Okay. Okay. Um, and this, the, the agreement for at least for the Galway site is the same as three days as currently. It's early. correct. Yes, okay. the same. It's the same. Okay. So I couldn't find the, the, the days right. of the week. Yes. All right. Thank you. Any other field or questions on this resolution? All the roll. Bennett. Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, 530. Bid contract with Kelly Winthrop Limited License Company for deer carcass <coughs> removal and disposal in the amount of $40,000 for, $40, for a two-year period. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone in the public interested in deer carcasses? Free alders? Yeah, that's an issue. That's an issue. Call <laughs> <laughs> them? Yes. Is that right. days? Again, yeah. Jerry, I know in the past we talked about maybe re requiring some kind of a time period where they must be picked off and they become right. a reduction. Is that in this contract? Again, I didn't see that. Or was that well, possible? Well, it is. I mean, I, I, I believe they're, they're supposed to respond within two hours. I mean, depending on where you know where they, they are. But. You said about last year there was that one by the park. Where That's right. Some put balloons on the deer. Right. It's out there. That's right. And, That's right. Okay. So, I, you know, I, the other question is, uh, this company is from Florida. I mean, I know yeah, they have a they have a local. I mean, there's a local yeah. office up here. I so, think it's in. I think they're in Cumberland County, if I remember correctly. Right. Because it goes back to the the, right. the time concern. Right. Just make sure they're done in the time and the manner. Right. Well, if they were coming from Florida, <laughs> 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 that's why the whole thing left here. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Days. Yes. 
another way around that. Yeah. All right, I just want to make sure, because we did have that discussion. Yes. Well, that, hopefully we can fix that. Thank, Thank you, you for your order. Yes. We'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me? Yes, 531. Big contract with Irma Correctional Services Limited Liability Company for the provision of laundry management services at the Atlantic County Justice Facility in the amount of one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. Motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest. Three other comments. Call the roll. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Kern. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Formica. Yes. Five three two. Acceptance of amended grant funding from the New Jersey Department of Human Services. Division of Family Development for 2018 Social Services for the Homeless Program Funds. Additional funding, $84,300. Second. Moved and seconded. Any public interest in this acceptance of grant? Three other comments? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes. I'll take a motion to please combine and adopt 533 to 535, all chapter 159. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 536. Agreement with Gateway Community Action Partnership for reimbursement of, of a portion of the expenses associated with resurfacing of the Garden Center parking lot in the amount of $13,500. Yeah. Second. Moved and seconded. Public input? Free holders? <coughs> Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes, 537. Alternate method contract with Acela Inc. for software licensing and maintenance amount not to exceed $26,000. Second. Moved and seconded. Public comment. Free holders? Call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes, 538. Big contract with Arthur R. Henry Inc provide the resurfacing of the part of center parking lot amount not to exceed $87,499.63. Second. Moved and seconded. Public concerns. Free order comment. Governor Bertino. Jerry, just as a very public information, why are we doing the parking lot there? Parking lot at the Family Center, which is located in Cardiff, it's on Spruce Avenue. It's in terrible disrepair. We're redoing. We're redoing the the parking lot because it, it requires it. Uh, we we have a uh, consultant uh, given us I think three or four uh, parking lots that we need to do for the year. And 536, if you remember, 536 was Gateway is paying for their pro rata share of the parking lot. They they lease space of uh, ground space from us on that property. Okay, thank you. Jerry, is it not true we own the lot, right? We own the entire property, yes. Back. That's okay. correct, yes, we do. I'm sorry I didn't explain. Yes. Okay, call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes. 539. Big contract with Joseph Peretta Builders, Inc. for catering hall kitchen fit out at Lenape Park East, amount not to exceed $764,400. Motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone in the public want to talk about that? Free holders? Aye. Yes, free holder Fitzpatrick. Hi. Um, we talked about this in the budget meeting today. The uh, bid came in at 764 and what, four years ago was estimated to be 750, so that's great. And what this is going to do is um, six months after the work starts, we're going to have a fully functioning commercial kitchen at Lake Lampy, which will be available for citizens, and uh, we'll have a vendor there to use it, and I think it's going to be a wonderful addition. Thank you for your yep. Anything else? We'll call the roll. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes, 540. Big contract with Arawak Paving Company, Inc. for the State Aid Highway Improvement Program of various roads to do the work and or supply the materials Amount not to exceed one million six hundred ninety-three thousand dollars. Second. Moved and seconded. Public comment. Free others. Call the roll. Bennett. 
Yes. Bertino? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Formica? Yes. Five or one. Memorandum of Understanding with Atlantic Care Regional Medical Center's Emergency Medical Services, Medical Communications Allowing Activation and Coordination of Emergency Medical Services, Resources, and Equipment. Motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Public opinion? Three holders. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 542. Lease agreement with the Center for Family Services for use of county owned premises located at 201 South Shore Road, Northfield, and Mount Nuttick C, $68,400. Second. Moved and seconded. Public interest? Three holders. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Are any of the appointments and reappointments in the next three resolutions present in the audience today? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to find and adopt those. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All appointed and reappointed. 546. Authorizing consent for a roadway solicitation event by A. Harper Township High School Baseball Booster Club at the intersection of Ocean Heights Avenue, County Route 559, and Zion Road, County Route 615 in the Township of Egg Harbor on Saturday, November 3, 2018, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Roadway solicitation in the public interest. Freeholders, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 547. Supporting Senate Bill number 2252, establishing statewide public plug-in electric vehicle charging system. Sponsor, Carol, Karen L. Fitzpatrick. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Freeola Fitzpatrick, you have the floor. Um, okay, so this this bill passed the Senate recently, and it's before the Assembly, and what it is basically is um, the Volkswagen uh, lawsuit from their um, uh, emissions fraud that happened a few years ago, and New Jersey is getting money from that. So New Jersey wants to establish a network of charging stations for electric vehicles. There will be 600 stations, uh, 600 outlets among 300 stations to alleviate what they call range anxiety and that's when people are afraid or anxious about purchasing an electric vehicle because they don't think they'll be able to get far enough on a charge. So there will be charge, charging stations throughout the state. And the reason this is important for us here in Atlantic County is because we are a driving destination we have many, many more cars and buses coming here than we have living here. They pollute our air. With um, electric vehicles, we can alleviate that. Um, New Jersey Transit is going to start uh, revamping their bus uh, inventory, I believe, in 2022. And this bill is encouraging them to purchase electric vehicles when they do that. And um, it's just uh, moving us forward into the 21st century new technology, which is only better for us. Thank you. Thank you, Freeholder. Sure. Freeholder Risley? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I concur. I uh, would like to see our state even go a lot further. I'd like to see our state uh, offer tax incentives for people to buy hybrids and electric vehicles. I've felt this way for, for many, many years that we need to uh, move towards more hybrids and electrics. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, uh, <clears throat> with this legislation is that, the, the other side of the cookie, as I like to say, is that um, uh, the, uh, it hasn't been solidified yet as to how far they're going to go with this, how big a program, but there is a downside, there's a cost, and that cost, beyond any grant money, is going to hit in your utility bill. So this is an, uh, an evolving program by the state, and where exactly or how extensive it's going to be, we don't know at this point in time. But uh, it will it could it will impact the uh, utility bills at a point in time. Thank you. Brother Fitzpatrick, on your spot. Yes, actually um, there is no sales tax on an electric vehicle purchased <coughs> in New Jersey and there's still a an uh, ten forty of federal income tax credit of seventy five hundred dollars available. Also, Atlantic City Electric has a program where they will give a 50% discount on equipment and installation for anyone who wants to install a charger in our home. Thank you. For other days? Uh, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I'm encouraged by the fact that the legislation uh, talks about a public and private sector investment as well. Um, so, encourage you know, that, that partnership, which is great. Um, I, I think you know, 
on a, on a more broad scale, though, is that we need to kind of look at how we, we, we plan. I mean, uh, we, we just fall in, in regional planning to make it um, with these types of vehicles even lower. I'm not sure the, the definition of the different types of electric vehicles, but um, some, some of the neighborhoods and areas where the speed limits are lower to make them a little more um, conducive and safer, I think, for and legal for some electric vehicles to be on the road. I'm um, talking more like electric golf carts that can go up to you know, 25, 30 miles an hour or so as well. So, you know, that's down the road. I mean, it's not that we're talking about here, but I think this is a good start and hopefully, you know, moving that in another direction. Thank you. Any other further comment? Phil Bertino? Uh, yeah, generally, obviously, it makes sense to uh, support the legislation. Hopefully, it comes out and not the trend would ever change something between the two houses, so uh, it's completely different. Um, but yeah, it's something that I think we should uh, obviously support. You know, the location of these facilities, and they, when they talk about 300, you know, 300 statewide is not much, and I know it's beginning, and it's just a start for them to do that. I'm assuming they're trying to read through here some of the locations on the Parkway Expressway. I would imagine the service areas is where they're probably talking about doing it. But as you uh, alluded to, I think the cost for providing this stuff, you know, acquisition of land and materials and stuff that go into doing it, even from the beginning stage, it has to be finalized. Obviously, so we know what the impact's going to be on the residents here in Lane County. Thank you. Any other field comments? Well, certainly, we pride ourselves in Lane County in one of the greenest, if not the greenest, in the state of New Jersey. We already have some charging stations at our ACUA. Yes, we do. We have them in different locations, so uh, we are already on the leading edge of this, and I think it's a, a great resolution to support. So, we'll call the roll. Dennis? Yeah. Fertino? Yes. Dave? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Kern? Yes. Risley? Yes. And for me. Yes, that brings us to the end of our printed agenda, unless I got the wrong agenda again. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one time. All right. All right. <coughs> I'm here to yell at me. Uh, reports of special committees. Any special committee reports we'd like to talk about today? As freeholders, we receive. Uh, you inter interface with a lot of different committees. Any special reports today? Saying none. Any unfinished business? Yes. Um, Freeholder Dave, do you want to talk about the code committee or should I do that? Well, I mean, I can, I mean, the last meeting, you know, we talked about, we were awaiting some, uh, I guess, some comments or answers to some of the questions that the committee had, which you provided. Um, I forwarded that to the members of the committee as you requested. Uh, um, they both expressed that they would like to be able to sit down not only with the county council but our um, freeholder um, solicitor as well. Uh, freeholder Gatto expressed that she was out of town, wouldn't be able to attend today's meeting. Um, so I tried to reach out to her and schedule something beforehand, but that didn't happen. Um, and I, I think I, you know, I let you know that that kind of was where it was, and uh, the, the committee had wished to meet at one more time to look at your answers and discuss them. All together, so you know, to, you know, miss it okay. asynchronously, so to speak. I just want to um, <clears throat> state that I, I did provide written answers to all the questions. Sure. Um, my position isn't going to change. I, I don't understand why we're having a, a trouble moving in a more transparent place where um, we would be <clears throat> supporting survivors of sexual harassment and assault instead of protecting uh, perpetrators. I, I, when you say transparent, are you implying that not, the, not the committee, the, no, the, the county order. overall? Yeah, right. yeah it, this, would, this would make us so open and, on, and not honest, so open and transparent um, that I just don't understand why I'm having that. Well, I, That's all. I mean, this is the process that we went with other, you know, other changes to county code came up. I mean, there was one in particular that, that went on for months and months and months. I mean, if, if that's your true intention, I don't understand why you would want to continue without having your questions you know, addressed within the committee setting and the solicitors. If that's the true intention of, okay. of your, your resolution. Just don't know how many more meetings we're going to have. Mr. Libertino? Yeah, your statement about pushback, I totally disagree. Even the implication that the committee is pushing back on the issue, we're simply asking, Give us the opportunity as I've requested, and um, I think I said that to you in the email. I just simply want some of my questions answered. There's always um, there's always information on the, especially when you're dealing with a, 
state of New Jersey and open public meetings that I want to make sure that there's no issues with us that we don't qualify with with state regulations on or local. As far as me generally, anytime there's public funds used, I don't care, put it out there. But that's what it's supposed to be to me. I could care less. Mm -hmm. But from the legal perspective, if we open ourselves up to some litigation by doing that, I want to make sure the public understands the litigation that we get through the support of resolution without vetting it and vetting it so we know what we're getting into. That was simply put. Okay. That was all. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? I, I, would, I, would, I would just like to say that I also take objection to anybody trying to hold anything back here transparently. I did a little research, and I'm going to ask our council to answer a direct question. Mr. Steedle, in the county, in, 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 under the state statute signed by Jim McGreevy in 2002 on OPRA and open meetings, is there any, is there anything that we settle in a courtroom that is unoperable, including, including non-disclosure agreements? Now, under the, uh, under the OPRA Act and the various amendments uh, that have occurred uh, over the number of years since it was first uh, initiated, OPRA takes uh, precedence over anything else. And if a proper OPRA request is made, uh, unless there is an exemption under the OPRA Act for the material that is being sought, uh, then it is fully disclosed and it is discoverable. I want to say that one more, I want to make it more succinct. In a sexual harassment suit in any county of New Jersey, and if it has been settled in a superior court, a federal court. Are non-disclosure agreements exempt from OPRA? No, they're not. And the reason for that is because uh, they are in court. It's a public domain. Once, uh, once it's in court, everything is discoverable in any of All the pleadings, so all the allegations that are being made, everything is discoverable. I do not disagree. I okay. completely agree with that. Okay. However, there are sometimes settlements that happen before there is a suit, if the county decides this case shouldn't even go to court. You are so correct. And so with that, I have Senate Bill 1046, which is Loretta Weinberg's bill, expanding OPRA to the only part of our government that does not disclose court rulings on sexual harassment. That is the New Jersey State Legislature. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you agree with me there? Yeah. Okay. So everybody in the public understands, and, and the streaming people over there, and our cameras. How you doing back here? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Atlantic County has full transparency on any settled uh, sexual harassment suits or any type of suit whatsoever, mm -hmm. including non-disclosure agreements. But the state of New Jersey's legislature does not. Yes, I understand. The governor does, the county does, every municipality does, but the guys that dreamt up the legislation, that we asked them, why are you doing it? Because we can. Now, finally, we have a Senate bill that is going to put them under the same rules as we are. We want nothing more than to advocate for the rights of victims. And, and here, but here it is, even in this bill, if something is settled, as you pointed out, privately, it's usually at the request of the accuser that does not want to be disclosed. So even in this bill, they're still preserving the right of the accuser to not have that discoverable. However, the accuser, knowing this with good counsel, will say, I do not want a private settlement. I want it in the public domain. And then everything is discoverable. And so, the effort to put forth a resolution here to make us more transparent is still not mustering up through this. And I'll say one other thing about the Senate bill. Our discoverability follows state statute. You can go back 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Take a look at what's happened with the Catholic Church. 40 years. Right? This bill is not retroactive. 
So if you have a serial abuser in the, in, that happened within the legislature, even with the new bill, let's make a resolution to have the makers of this bill amended to, to protect the victims to go back and make it retroactive. Of course we would. Because we all hear, if there's any inference that this county is not transparent, I mean, I, my research shows no. And as far as Mr. Bertino's comments on where every penny goes, I think that that should be discoverable all the time. Well, that's, that's the thing, that uh, sometimes they're settled before they get on the docket. The uh, insurance payments that are made to cover the settlement sure. are never brought before this board. Well, you put it like this. It's only because it's covered, it's covered in state statute. That has to be changed. That's a function of the law. It is followed in jurisprudence by the defendant's attorneys and by the plaintiff attorneys. So uh, the reason, and and Freeland Fitzpatrick, believe me, we can all get behind something right now. We all the time. We can get behind anything that you know we think is a good idea. And I've done it myself. But if we don't have it vetted completely with our legal department and don't have everyone on the committee's answers, you know, it just is imprudent business to do. Okay. So we're going. You're going to schedule a meeting uh, yeah. with council and the committee, and yeah, I've asked you know Sonia, and even though um, we reached out to Jerry, you know, we said Sonia will schedule a new refi administration. Um, mainly, again, I said Peter Gatto wasn't available for yeah. you know, since the last meeting. Um, so I've already asked her when she gets back, you know, schedule some. And you, uh, and I think that's just the way that we should do it. And then whatever the committee comes up with, we will support. But to indicate that we aren't transparent is the only thing we're not transparent about is at the where the law handcuffs the transparency. And in the state government, up to now, they've been completely allowed to not disclose anything, which is ridiculous. So, all right. Anything else? On their old business. New business. Yes. <laughs> Uh, just a uh, quick question. Uh, I know that we have a number of different ad hoc committees that we all sit on. I was wondering, some of them haven't met for the year yet. Is that going to happen before the end of the year? I, because my, my thought process says that at least there should be at least one meeting of the year. I know, for example, the Shared Services Committee was formed this year, but it hasn't met yet. So I just wanted to bring that up in your business and see that everybody Well, every year we like we had a uh, uh, we had a tourism committee meeting at one time. Mm -hmm. We were trying to uh, you know interface with the different tourist people. Okay. Uh, I was the one that came up with the asset review committee because we were thinking about privatizing different assets in this county. But it mm -hmm. looked like our budget was going completely down, which thank God it rebounded a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the year, we evaluate those committees that we never met with, we'll eliminate them next year okay. because they have no purpose. And maybe a new one will come up that okay. would have to do. So your suggestion is good. After the meeting, we'll look at those meetings. We can discuss it and see sure. which ones are not really functioning anymore. You know, it's like dormant. Okay. But you're absolutely right. Yes, really, but Just one, like uh, that I chair is finally as review. Finally as review generally doesn't meet. Uh, when we have issues, and I deal with the Parks Commission, but I meet with the Parks and, and, and Environmental, there were issues about that related to it. Obviously, we would bring it back, but there hasn't. So there are some committees that are kind of like, like you say, you don't see that they meet. Because there has to have a need from a, from a county perspective. That's needed. You know, and then all of a sudden, something will come up in like a Pinelands issue. And then all the soccer fields and hand. Soccer fields and hand. And all of a sudden we got to meet, you know. So, mm -hmm. but I think it's a good suggestion to look at the ones that are dormant and really don't serve a purpose. But that's the reason why. Okay. Thank you. Anything else in unfinished business? New business. Oh, that was new business. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, written communications, correspondence. Any one of us wish to talk about any correspondence that we received recently? Okay, and now we'll open up to the public. Anyone in the public wish to speak, please come. feel free to come forward. Creed, you can speak even though Corsi's not here. You have anything? Corsi is <laughs> Well then, Mr. Chairman, since you asked. Careful what I asked for. <laughs> um, Creed Poe, 169 Cumberland Avenue. Um, 
Mr. Chairman, in all seriousness, I was back and forth on whether I would um, inquire about this or not, particularly through Mr. Steedle. Um, is it the understanding that there is or there is not a state law that would forbid the county from disclosing non-disclosure agreements made outside of a courtroom? Let me, let me have a rephrasing of your question so that I can say okay. exactly what it is. Your I'll do it this way. Yes, Ms. Jones, a county employee, says that she was harassed by Mr. Smith, her supervisor. Uh, brings those allegations through the process, goes through county administration. Uh, it's decided that um, recompensance needs to be had. The situation is such that. Uh, Ms. Jones will leave county employment, um, receive some sort of compensation before anything even went to Superior Court. Um, obviously, again, since that was done through insurance, uh, doesn't come to the freeholder board. Is there, to your understanding, anything in New Jersey statutes annotated that would forbid the county from disclosing that, assuming there's the consent of in this case, Mrs. Smith. It works in the reverse. Actually, the uh, OPRA law has uh, a variety of uh, exemptions. Right. One of the exemptions uh, is an, an attempt to protect the alleged victim of a sexual harassment or gender harassment. And it functions to allow the process to take place internally within the county and then not make a disclosure if it's not desired by the, or consented to by the, by the, uh, uh, the election victim. So that is an exception, an exemption to the uh, OPA law. Uh, the process uh, does not go public unless the uh, person who is involved wants, uh, wants it to go public. Uh, more often than not, uh, don't, because if it, if it was contained within the within an internal process, there usually is a reason for it. Um, sometimes the person doesn't want I any, will answer the question, any information Brad. at all. I'm, I'm not finished. I'm sorry? Sometimes the person doesn't want any information about a um, harassment of that nature becoming public. And, and for a lot of good reasons. And, um, stalking sorry. could be one. So and Mr. Chairman, I understand Mr. Steele's answer, but that was not quite the question that I was laying out well, because I was I, saying I was saying that's why with, I asked you to rephrase. well that's why I was saying with the consent of the employee who was involved the, is there anything that prevents the county no, from not, disclosing and that was where my question no, no. but on the other hand if that's not it wouldn't otherwise be known and if the employee if in this case Ms. Smith is being told you will receive X in return for signing the NDA, a lot of people may choose to sign the NDA even if they were okay with it being made public because that makes it easier in what is already a very difficult situation. And Mr. Chairman, we can have a, I know, a discussion on some of this, and it's, it's at that time of the year too, and I understand, respect that, and that's not where I think any of this is coming from, but just... Just to make it clear, though. NJSA 47.1A hyphen 1.A if the employee complaint remains internal the documents are exempt under that statute from disclosure. If the employee files or a complaint are in a public forum oversee privacy laws no longer are applicable. It's as simple as that back and forth. Right, right. And the, but the thing is the proposed ordinance is saying that the county in this case, and again, not saying that this ever happened, and hopefully would never happen. I will re we'll research and give it. But that Ms. Smith in that situation, in fra for phrasing the question, could not be told, well, you need to sign the NDA to go on with your life. And that's the... 
It's I think that's where I think that's where the ordinance. It's a mutual agreement represented by counsel and a judge. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I guess we'll have to agree to disagree on that uh, part of it. <coughs> With respect. Else, anyone else in the public wish to speak? We'll close the public portion. Anything really good in the order? Yes. Um, I, I'd like to recognize what happened um, last week um, in Pittsburgh. Perhaps um, a moment of silence. For Absolutely. The who were murdered. Absolutely. A moment of silence, please. Thank you, everybody. The second part is perhaps we could have uh, in front of our county building. Uh, some kind of notice or a sign that says that we value our diversity and hate has no home in the Okay, that sounds like a good suggestion. Thank you. How do you do that? I guess we'll have to discuss that with the administration. Thank you. Anything else? Brother Bennett? Oh, one of the members of the Youth Services Commission, Mr. Tyler Page, passed away. Um, so if we could have a moment of silence. Moment of silence for Tyler Page. Thank you. I'll take a motion. So, Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good day. Aye.